This is Support is Sexy, episode 55, and today we're going to talk about resistance. Welcome to the Support is Sexy podcast. I'm your host, Elaine Fluker, entrepreneur, author, producer, and founder of Chic Rebellion Media. Five days a week, Monday through Friday, I talk to women entrepreneurs who share their journeys and the true stories of their wins and their lessons and give you insight and inspiration to take your business and your life to the next level. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Support is Sexy. This is Elaine, and I am so happy to have you here. You know, it just would not be the same without you. So today, you know, I was all week I've been thinking about I was going to do today's episode on Friday because I do solo episodes on Fridays, at least for now. I um, was going to talk about resistance and I was doing it from the premise of I gave in my book proposal this week, which I'm very excited about, but I've been having resistance to writing it for the past couple of weeks. I don't know why. Well, that's not true. I do know why. It's that thing of being afraid that once I do it, it wasn't going to be good enough or I was going to leave something out or the agent that I was sending it to wasn't going to like it. But I did it. I sent it. It's done. I feel good about it. I pushed through that resistance eventually. And what helped me and what usually helps people is having a deadline. So I did that. So I thought that was going to be the premise of what I was going to talk about today. And one of the things that I was going to cite is the book that I love that I recommend to people all the time that I actually buy for people all the time. The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. But of course, you can look it up and go find it. It's a fantastic book that talks about, especially from an artist standpoint, conquering resistance. But then things change this week. Yesterday, um, Phyla Antoine, who's actually episode 17 of the Support is Sexy podcast, she is a life and relationship coach, fabulous, and she is family. But last night, she tagged me in a video that Nicole Kane, who is the former, uh, well, she is the founder of the website formerly known as NicoleBitchy.com, which was a gossip website. And she launched a new site, XONicole.com, because she has talked about how she uh, wanted to make a change. She didn't want to do gossip anymore. She wanted to start a lifestyle site, especially for women of color, because she wanted to put something positive out in the world. I'm paraphrasing. And I should say, I do not know her personally, although I've admired her work from a distance. Again, I do not know her personally. But yesterday, I guess it was yesterday, but my uh, Phyla tagged me yesterday. Uh, Nicole posted a video where she was very transparent, very open, and very seemingly, again, I don't know her, but seemingly honest about how difficult it has been to make the transition from this hugely successful uh, gossip site where she was talking about celebrities and you know, fraternizing with celebrities and seemingly having a great time to putting all of her money in this new investment that she has, uh, exonicole.com, and it not working out as she thought. In fact, she, in the video she goes through, and I'll put a link to the video as well so you all can see it if you haven't already. But in the video, she discusses how difficult of time it was, but also financially what a strain it was for her trying to do everything herself, sinking all of her money into this new idea, this new concept that she thought people were going to migrate to just because it was, oh, and I shouldn't say just because, but partly because it was positive and she was doing something positive. It didn't turn out that way, and it began to be such a struggle. She says that she was financially a few times, and if not now, in dire straits, really trying to figure things out. I'll just say I get it. Now, I did not have a huge gossip website or anything like that, but what I did have was a career that was doing pretty well in media. Worked in media for 20 years, making a six-figure salary, doing really great, great positions, great companies and all of that, and I traded that in, so to speak. That experience, you never lose. That's one thing I do want to say. You never lose your experience. So whenever you move towards something different, don't feel like I'm going to lose all this experience. You take that with you, just like contacts. You take that with you. Those are yours. You earned it. You own it. But I did not take the job or the six-figure salary with me when I decided to become an entrepreneur full-time, focus on chicrebellion.tv, put all of my money, time, energy, investment into doing that as much as I could to make that grow as a website that I envision as a platform 
uh, internet TV network for women of color to share their stories. Now, with all businesses, as we all know, many of you are entrepreneurs, either aspiring or currently are, you have this vision for what you want to do, and that is exactly what you need. You need a vision for what you're going to do. It doesn't always work out as planned. In fact, a lot of times things don't work out as planned. Some of the biggest businesses even may have started as something else. The example of Airbnb is, uh, I think they started originally, it was all about couch surfing, but now it clearly has evolved into something much bigger. So you never know, but you have to start off with a plan, an idea, move toward that, really focus on that, put your energy into it, wisely invest into it if it is your own money, which is what I did and which is what it seems Nicole Kane did also. But things don't always go as planned. And when you're putting all of your own money into it, it can throw you off if you don't have enough for the long haul. Speaking from experience, I went through that with TV. I put everything that I had into it. It did not turn around as fast as I thought it would or as I hoped it would as I planned for it to. I did get advertisers. I did get some things, but it wasn't enough to keep it going the way I wanted to keep it going, what I envisioned. But that's not even what this episode is about. That's all backstory. What I wanted to talk about, though, is when we, all of us, myself, and it seems, Nicole, you come to that point where you need support and you don't ask for it. Now, I'm not just saying this because the podcast is called Support is Sexy, but I am in this zone right now. I push it heavy for you and for myself. It's a constant reminder to myself to ask for support when you need it. In fact, I'm even going through it now. I have to ask for support when I need it. Or a lot of times for some of us, asking is difficult or admitting that we need it might be difficult, but I think the most difficult part, and this is something I put in my book proposal actually, the most difficult part for many of us as ambitious, as uh, Kyra Akita says, as impressive women, the hardest thing for us is to accept support. So sometimes it's not even that I don't know where to go, meaning all of us, I'm speaking for all of us, yes I am. I don't know where to go to get support, I don't know what to do to get support, A lot of times, isn't it you don't know how to accept support? I call it the I got it syndrome. You know, somebody offers you, it could be the smallest thing. I don't know. Think of something small someone offered you recently and your response was to the effect of, no, no, I got it. 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 I'm big on that. Oh, I got it. That's okay. No, it's okay. I got it. And sometimes, granted, it's okay. You got it. Fine. How many times, though, would it have been easier for you from the smallest thing to the bigger thing to be like, you know what? Yes. I, I, yeah, let help me. This is what I'm going through. In fact, I just did that with, uh, Sydney Campos, who was a guest on the show recently. And, um, I was talking to her, having a conversation with her. Sydney is episode 43. And I, she mentioned, we were talking about something else and she mentioned me. And if there's anything I can do to support you, At first, I was going to be like, okay, thank you. I'll let you know. I wrote back and responded, yes, social media, because that's an area of specialty for her. This is what I'm going through with social media. I love your feedback. It could be as simple as that. Two, maybe it's something bigger. Maybe it's something that financially you need to say yes to because of something you're going through. Maybe it's something in your relationship um, or outside of your relationship that you need to say yes to that you're going through and you need support around. Maybe it's something in your business you need support around. Uh, Akina Rockman from Banana Skirt, she was just on the show the other day, fantastic episode 53, please check that out. And we were talking about support networks because that's a big part of what I ask everyone, what does your support network look like? And Akina was honest and in, in, uh, admitting that she has trouble accepting or asking for support because she's building a business and it's growing very fast and she wants to, in her words, have control of everything, which I get because we feel like nobody else is going to do it to the level that I, I'm speaking now. This isn't me speaking for her. No one else is going to do it the way that I can do it. I need to take control of this to make sure that it's right. We need to control it or oversee it to make sure that it's right, but we also need support. And I'm going to get Akina some support. She doesn't know that I'm working on that. But for all of us, we need to be able to accept support. Think about the areas in your life where you're holding things so tightly and you won't let it go and you won't let. And support can look, as I always say, and as I have learned through momentum, the courses I took through momentum, support can look a lot of different ways. It might not even come from the people that you ask. It might come from somewhere else, but you have to make the ask, then be open to receiving it. 
from the universe, from someone you don't expect. I have done that in the simplest way sometime with guests. I want to, I am very focused on having multicultural guests, women from all backgrounds, experiences, orientation, just everything. I want all kinds of women to appear on the show, talk about being entrepreneurs and creatives. Sometimes I think about, oh, I need this kind of person. I haven't talked to this person with this experience yet. I haven't talked to that person. And I tell you, Every single time, and I do reach out to people because I ask for support and say, hey, do you know anyone who's doing this kind of thing or who is this kind of person? And it shows up. It always shows up. Somebody introduces me or I get an email from someone about this person who is perfect or I think of someone or I meet someone at an event who is perfect. It always shows up. Maybe not right away, but it shows up. The thing that stops us, though, in all of this, our journey to get the support we need, the things we want, the things that will move us forward, resistance. We resist support. Lots of us. Like I said, we're ambitious, impressive, all about it, got it going on, doing things, creating. Even when it's hard, though, even when we know we need some support, we resist. It's there. I don't know why. It's, like I said, this I got it syndrome. For many of us, culturally, it's this either the strong black woman thing or it's the strong whatever background you are. You got it. You can do it. In New York, we have a hang up about being, is there so many things in society, otherwise mentally, self-talk, all kinds of reasons we can come up with not to ask for support, all kinds of reasons we can find resistance around support. We need to let that go. And I was so, as you can probably tell, moved by Nicole's video because one, my heart went out to her. Two, I was proud of her for being so honest. Three, I was upset that some people seem to be reveling in her uh, moment of transparency and vulnerability, which is a whole other discussion and that no good can ever come from that. But also because I hope, and maybe she is, I shouldn't say she's not getting the support she needs, but there was certainly a period where from what she says, it seemed like it was tough and maybe she didn't know where to turn. And that's another thing too. Sometimes you don't know where to turn, but you know what? There is so much information out there now on the internet. If you have access to Wi-Fi, if you have access to the internet, you can get online. And of course, don't believe everything you read, but just start there. If you don't, if you say, you know, I don't know who to turn to, who to ask and that kind of thing, go online, do some searches and see things that look like reputable resources for you to get started in whatever direction you need to go in. Sometimes that's the best way to start, or sometimes that just sparks an idea. You do some research and that kind of thing. Also, be sure to surround yourself with people who will not take no for an answer when they offer you support. I talk a lot about my friends on the show. Those are my booze. They are there for me, ride or die, have been for 20 years when I need support, and I hope I do the same for them, but when I need support, even when I'm too silly or too resistant to accept it, they push. Gently, sometimes they curse me out, whatever it takes, but they push until I accept the support that I need. It's the reason, as I said on a past episode, that I ended up in Martha's Vineyard, had the best time ever. Was It was exactly what I needed that time because things were kind of stressful, but my friends refuse to accept no for an answer. Now, at a point, of course, it's my final decision. And for you, it's your final decision. But be aware of that resistance and why are you resisting? And also, don't beat yourself up. A lot of times we beat ourselves up too. One, for either needing support or, oh, I should have taken that support. Whatever happened, happened. Be in the moment. What do you need right now? I, I've often said, I think, the sexiest words in our language is, tell me what you need. Those five words, if someone could say that, how would, how would, wouldn't you just love to hear that from somebody right now? Not even from a physical standpoint, just from the space of support. Tell me what you need. Now, even if that person couldn't provide it for you, just being able to express, this is what I need right now. Help me figure out how to make it happen. You know, this is, this is not even just one of the reasons that I started this show, Certainly, it's a part of it, but it's also the reason that I started this uh, mastermind group that we have on Facebook. And I'm not saying this to promote it, but I'm just saying in that space, it's another example. And I gently push the women that are in the group. 
if you need something, ask in the group. No one in the group might, you know, know the resources or be the resource that you need, but they might know someone. You never know who people know. That's the thing. We think, oh, my friends don't know X or my Facebook friends don't know, et cetera, or, oh, my Twitter file, or even beyond social media, whatever. My group, my family, my friends don't know. But who do they know who might know someone who might know someone? Or just your ask of putting it out there. Don't resist what you need to put out there in the world in order to get the support that's going to show up for you. Because it will, I guarantee you, trust me, it will show up. I don't know when, definitely don't know how. I'm all about letting go of the how, but it will show up. Your job is to be open, to be aware of your resistance, to push that aside and accept support. And I say this too, because a lot of us go so far as I say this too because a lot of us go so far as to let things get so bad where we feel like doing something hurtful to ourselves or we have um, anxiety or high levels of stress or we get sick because we need support and we won't ask for it and we're so stressed out. In a conversation, episode 47 with Aaliyah S. King, which was a great episode, Aaliyah talked about writing, of course, as her passion, as her background, but She also spoke about the importance of getting support around your mental health and wellness and the things that she's doing and what other women need to do. That, now there's some place that I refuse to let you resist getting support. I have been to therapy years ago. I know tons of other women who have been to therapy or who go to therapy now or or have uh, other kinds of medical support, whatever you need, get the support you need. There's no shame around it. Shame cannot exist in the light. If you keep it in the darkness, it eats away at you. It eats away at everything. Get the support you need. You cannot afford to be resistant there. And look, it's selfish of you not to get the support you need. That's what I started telling myself. It is selfish of you not to get the support you need because you are up to something. You are creating something special in the world. As I said on our last episode uh, last Friday, you have a ripple. Your ripple affects a lot of people. If not now, then soon. You are creating something great. You matter. You're important. You are up to something. Like I said, you are up to something. So how dare you not get the support you need to be as big as you're supposed to be? You're supposed to be big in this world. You have things to contribute, things to do. Why waste time being resistant to not getting the support you need? That's selfish. You're not selfish. You're generous. You're ambitious, but you're generous. So get the support you need to create the things you're supposed to create in this world, the things that you're meant to create in this world, the things that you want to create, things that really give you purpose that you're up to. What, again, Whatever that is, if you're a stay-at-home mom, a businesswoman, a career woman, figure it out, get support. And look, I always say, you can ask me. I don't have all the answers for sure. I don't have all the answers. I can probably help you find it, though. So if you want to email me, Elaine at ElaineFluker.com, first name E-L-A-Y-N-E, last name F-L-U-K-E-R.com. Let's figure it out. Let's get you some support or get you in the group, the Facebook group, or get something around where you have some women who are all about that and in that space, help to build you up, help to get you the support you need, whatever it is. Not selling anything or anything. I just really, after seeing that video and hearing Nicole's story and knowing that she is not alone and I have been through different parts of that and many of us have and A lot of us don't have the balls to go and put it out on social media and do it. And hopefully that's a good thing for her. And it'll certainly inspire a lot of women. But I really hope that it helps her in moving forward. And for all of us, it is an example of being open about what you need. You don't have to post it on YouTube. You don't have to put it on social media at all. But you need to get the help you need. You are up to something. Don't be selfish. Get support. Face down that resistance. Push through it. You will be happier and better for it. So thank you so much for listening. You guys know I truly appreciate you. For all of the episodes from this week and before, go to supportissexypodcast.com. I love you guys so much for listening. You are the best. So now 
you know what to do. Go out there and create something sexy. And I'll talk to you soon. Take care.